perhaps you know the situation. You're at a dinner in the evening, you want to spend some time with your friends, and you want to talk with them actually, but what happens, everybody pops out their mobile phones and has to check this uh, urgent email that just came in, which was spam, or um, has to post on Facebook what he's eating currently, um, but is not talking to you. And this is something that I, I see from time to time. And the question um, that arose is, is this something that only I am experiencing, or is it something that perhaps other people experience too? So this is when I did some research, and I found um, a very interesting game. It's called the phone stacking game. And the phone stacking game, um, I guess some of you know it, is a game that you can use um, to control the urge uh, to grab your phone during a meal. And it actually, it's quite a simple game with a big effect. And the rules are, at the beginning of your dinner, everybody puts their phone down on the table face down, and during the course of a meal, nobody is allowed to use their phones. Pretty simple. If somebody can't resist and picks up his phone or her phone, actually what happens, this person has to pay the meal for the whole round. If nobody picks up the phone, everybody pays for themselves. And after I heard of that game, and it's a game that's uh, played globally, you see really people all over the world participating in that, I thought, okay, this is something that's not happening only with me and my friends, but it's also happening to other people, and it's also happening all around the globe. And I continued thinking about that. And I thought, how does it come that we are sitting at a table where we should communicate locally with our friends, basically talking to each other, but instead what we are doing is actually we're checking what's happening on Twitter, we're checking what's happening on Facebook, and we're not really connected with what's happening um, locally. And I found out that we all um, carry some kind of Swiss army knife of the internet with us, and this is why I thought about a little about Swiss army knives. And a Swiss army knife is a great tool for certain purposes. For example, um, you can open a wine bottle with a Swiss army knife pretty easily. You can also cut some cheese that goes with a wine. And as we see here, somebody was so smart to actually put a saw on this Swiss army knife. So what we have here is a tool to actually chop a tree with. And I, I don't know if anybody of you ever tried chopping a whole tree with a Swiss army knife, but it's possible with this thing. <laughs> and the question is, if we have this opportunity in our pockets with a Swiss army knife, is it necessarily the best way to do these things? And in the case of chopping wood, I think it's quite obvious, but it's not the most effective way to do so. Um, and so these kind of multi-tools are kind of destructive, right? And on the other side, we have very dedicated devices. And this is, for example, a picture of my camera. And actually what you can do with this camera is just taking pictures. You can't take any videos with it. Um, you actually, um, you can just like say um, how long is the exposure. You can um, regulate the f-stop. You can focus, you can frame the picture, you can take the picture. And that's basically all it does. So it's a very dedicated device, and it's basically the complete opposite direction of a Swiss Army knife. So we had this phenomenon at our dinner party. I call it social distraction, because um, you're still kind of social, using your social networks, um, but you only use your online social networks and are distracted from what's happening in your offline social network a.k.a. the table you're sitting at. And the more I thought about it, I thought about, okay, would it perhaps be a good idea to disconnect ourselves completely from the internet? It's basically what the phone stacking game is about. Just leave the internet for some time um, before you can get back to it and go offline to not make your peers suffer, to continue communicating with them locally. And when I thought about that, is 
We all have our mobile phones with us all the time, and they are smartphones because they are connected to the internet constantly. So we are socially distracted from what's happening locally by what's happening online. And I don't know how many of you would be willing to completely go offline. No more email, no more Facebook, no more Twitter, no Wikipedia. And I thought for myself, no way, I don't want to do that. So there has to be some other solution. And I think the solution is, just like um, you can chop a tree with a Swiss Army knife, you can also try to communicate um, with the internet with the Swiss Army knife called your smartphone. But it's perhaps not the best way um, to do so, and we haven't found the optimum yet. And I brought with me a little example. It's basically, um, I'm pretty tempted to check what's happening on Twitter right now. It's really, it freaks me out. I, I just want to know, are people, what are you tweeting? Most conferences have a real online back channel where you can see what people are thinking about. Um, so I'm a bit nervous because I don't know what's happening there. And that's why I brought this little machine with me. And actually, what this does is we have a little, a little new way of displaying what's happening online, what's happening on Twitter. Um, and this new way includes basically soap bubbles. So whenever you are using these two hashtags together, which I don't know, perhaps you already did, um, perhaps you didn't, just in case, um, please do so now. Um, just tell me what you think about this talk, and then I will see if somebody did that, um, and the actual interface will be the soap bubbles there. So um, I just give you some, some time for that, and um, while I wait for you to type in the characters, I just continue talking. So just to make sure you all have these hashtags that we have here, it's hashtag TEDxTUHH and hashtag making underscore DE. And if you do so, we'll soon have some soap bubble action here. And actually, you see here, somebody tweeted, and the nice thing is, I didn't even have to look at my mobile phone. So thanks. Um, and this is just a little example. It's just an example uh, that's a little emotional and not too much. Um, I mean, it's not. I'm very confident now because you're tweeting and it runs again, which is really, really great. Um, and perhaps it will run all over uh, my talk. I just let it. And the nice thing is, now I'm, I'm confident. I know somebody is um, tweeting about this talk. What I don't know yet is, are you tweeting in a positive way or in a negative way? <laughs> so perhaps next time I'll have two of these machines. <laughs> so I can also see your sentiments and see, see your mood. I mean, I actually can see your mood because I'm looking you right in the face, right? So yeah, I'm quite confident you're tweeting positively currently. So, um, and how does this thing work? We are here at the Tech University, so I'll start with a tech site before I go to some use cases. And the answer is, it's actually pretty simple. It's all based on an open source framework, both for the hardware and for software. And um, open source in this case means all the plans that you need to build this thing. And they're basically software, like the programming part, and hardware, like the soap bubble machine and how to wire it. Um, they are all freely available, and they are freely available um, on an open source um, software network. And you can just grab this, and if you have the necessary technical literacy, and it's really pretty imp uh, simple, you can just go there and build it yourself. And as you see in this picture, you don't need to solder. You can just plug these um, cables in. Um, if you're able to solder, or perhaps you're also able to produce these little um, PCBs, um, in either case, you can check out the code here, the URL is right behind me, and if this not soldering thing is too simple for you, um, 
also the plans for the PCB are there ready for production. You can just grab them and send them to some um, electronics shop and they'll produce these things for you. So um, perhaps you're interested in that too. If you're a person that not, that's not too much on the technical side of things, I also want to show you what you can actually do with it. And the first project I want to show you, um, it's basically a ping pong table that's connected to the internet. And the question is, why did we do that? And the answer is, because in this case, I worked with a university in Hamburg, and they had this little problem that they have the coffee room in the second floor and the ping pong table um, on the ground floor. And what happens then is you're drinking your coffee and um, you want to go to play some table tennis. You go downstairs and you see, oh yeah, the ping pong table is occupied. Hmm. Okay, you go back to the coffee room and although this might be potentially good for your health because you move yourself and hmm, um, perhaps it's a little frustrating to wait. So actually what happens here is you have this ping pong, ping pong table and you actually use it like you usually would. You just step on the table and you play ping pong and there's some motion sensors and what they do is actually they track if there's motion and if there's motion on the ping pong table there is this little ping pong ball in the coffee room that lights up red which means the ping pong table is occupied. And this is a case which is a little more, it has more use case potential. Um, and the nice thing here is, perhaps you realize it already, you're using the internet and you're communicating online with your, um, with your colleagues or with your um, student, with your fellows, and you don't even realize that you're using the internet because you don't have to learn anything new. You just do what you usually do. You're playing ping pong and that's it. So we have a very, very effective way of communicating here. You don't have a Swiss Army knife, you have a dedicated device. And what it really does is here. It helps us, we can still talk, we can communicate with each other in that, in that room, and we don't have to put out our phones and distract ourselves too much. So this is the, what this thing is, is good for. Another case that's based on this kind of prototyping techniques is um, a digital foosball table. And the idea here is basically um, a little more advanced than the ping pong table, because what this thing actually does is counting the goals that you shoot for your team. So every time um, you shoot a goal, you can actually see it, um, you can put a tablet on the wall, and you have a little scoreboard, like in a stadium which is really nice. So you can you just shoot your goals and this thing counts it automatically for you. And what it also does, if you want it to, is that it can actually tweet the results of your game. And perhaps you ask yourself, why should I do that? And in my case, actually, this is me at the table with a teammate uh, that I built this thing with. And on the other side of the table, we are really the top-notch foosball players of the agency. So, if I'm able to win, I want to show this off on Twitter immediately. On the other hand, if I should lose, the blame would also be on me, but this is a risk that you just have to take in this case. So, what I just showed you is basically about, what I want you to keep in mind is you should only, you should think twice if you want to adapt yourself to machines, or if you want to make the machines adapt to you. Like in the case, are we really in the situation where we have to make our dinner suffer because we have to adapt to our mobile phones? Or could it be of much more interest if we think about new ways, like the Swiss Army knife. There's a saw on it, we can chop a tree with it, but perhaps somebody found a better way to do that. And that's basically what this thing is about. And I want to thank you all for, for all the tweets that came in here. And I'm also glad that this thing actually worked. And yeah, just think about if you're working with the internet or if you're building the internet yourself, just think about that there are more ways than just screens and keyboard that you can let people communicate with each other. Thank you. <laughs>